<laughs> Thanks for the introduction. She joked that she was going to do that, um, so thank you. So it's so formal. For those who don't know me, um, I'm happy to go by Kate. Uh, <laughs> but thanks anyway, Christy. <laughs> um, isn't God good? How amazing. I don't feel like I really need to say anything, honestly. I feel like Lorian and Brendan and Christy did a great job and we could probably all just go and have a cup of tea. Um, but Al's asked me to if there was anything that um, I thought uh, that I had to share. And so I'm taking that opportunity. Um, Al has an amazing gift on his life. Whoop. So be kind to me because Al's a great communicator and I'll try my best. So I, what I thought today, we've, if for anyone who's visiting and I can see there's a, a few faces, uh, this year we've been um, on a journey and with Pastor Al uh, talking about the renewed, renewing our minds. Um, thanks, Dave. Dave's not there. Good on you. Uh, so what I wanted to do was um, really sit in um, the verse, and so looking at Romans 12, 2, uh, and there's a few things that um, the Holy Spirit, I think, has been talking to me about, so I want to talk about those, and then um, I'd also like just to share uh, a, a story about my life with you as well. Uh, so first one, Romans 12, looking at NIV, and I have to look up here because my notes are too small, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Thanks, Dave. Can we go to next slide, please? Looking at the passage again, this time with New Living Translation. So don't copy the behaviour and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Amen. How good is that? So as we renew our minds in word and the truth of God, we begin to see things from his perspective. So when we start spending time with God, we start to value what he values. Who's ever had the experience of some pretty ordinary friends who aren't the right influence? Did anyone else have those friends? Amen. Amen. Proverbs 12, 26 tell us that the righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. I remember when I first became a Christian at 16, it grew really awkward because I started going to church and learning about God and the more my old friends didn't really seem that interesting anymore. And by spending time with renewing our minds and so, by spending time and renewing our minds, spending time with God, we no longer see the things in, from a worldly standpoint but rather a heavenly view. So next, Dave's got a little diagram, because I'm a visual person too, Brendan, I see you. So looking at this diagram, we can see the relationship between our thoughts and our emotions and our behaviours, that our minds are the catalyst for the behaviour. So if we look at my situation that I just told you about as the case study for this, so I met 16, I met Jesus when I was 16 in a radical way, which I'm going to tell you about in a minute. But I start spending time at church, which affects the, the way I think, which impacts on my emotions because now I have a new interest, which changes my behaviour because I start seeing things in a completely different way, start hanging out with a completely different set of kids at school. My behaviour change was so dramatic that we, we've all got these situations and you can remember the day. You can remember what class you were in. I can remember where I was sitting in the classroom and this, this kid turns around to me, I was 16, year 10, in English class and he said to me, I don't know what's happened to you lately. You used to be so loud and crazy. And I thought, okay, wow. I didn't see myself like that, but I guess my behaviour had really changed. 
which was even more sad because I really did have a crush on this guy. So, and then I was like devastated. Uh, I want to share, and that wasn't Dave either. No. So I want to share a story with you this morning about my life and how God transformed it one Friday afternoon. His goodness invaded my reality and showed me the goodness and incredible power of the kingdom and completely changed the way I thought, particularly with my health. So I was born with a thing called a lymphangioma, which is a very big word to explain a vascular disease which has an excessive growth of lymphatic tissue. Normally, uh, it's diagnosed by the time kids are two or three because it pops out um, a big lump in their neck, sometimes in their tongue. Uh, But mine wasn't diagnosed until um, I was 16, but we'll get there. So when I was five, I just had a really small lump at the top of my right leg and my mum took me to the doctor and he said, I think that's a hernia. Really unusual for girls to get a hernia there, but we're going to do an operation. So at five, I have an operation. Um, The swelling doesn't really go down. Mum takes me back and the doctor says, I know, it's just probably the swelling's just never going to go away, but it's fine, we fixed the repair. We did the repair. So, fast forward, I have chicken pox at 13 and my mum takes me to the doctor and he's looking at all the chicken pox and they're everywhere and he sort of sees the lump in my leg and sort of questions me about it. And I said, actually, yeah, it does hurt and, you know, if I do this and that, it kind of pops out a little bit more. And so, he said, well, I don't think that's normal, so let's go and do some tests. So, we do all the tests um, and we find out, uh, we have an MRI scan and find out that I've got this lymphangioma. But mine's hidden. So mine was uh, in my torso, the, ex- the entire extent of my torso. So up, uh, going behind my heart, um, all the way down, all throughout my body and just a tiny little lump uh, at the bottom of my leg-, leg is all you could see. Uh, so... Life goes on, I'm 16 and I'm staying the night at a friend's place and all of a sudden I get this terrible pain. Sorry. And the pain won't go away and I ring mum and dad and I say, oh, can you come and get me? And my dad, bless him, he goes, no, you'll be fine. We'll come and get you in the morning. So I don't sleep, I'm in terrible pain blacking out in the pain and I ring them about 5am and I think dad knew it was serious and I said you've got to come and get me. So we get home and we can't do anything about the pain so mum says it's a Sunday and she says all right I'll ring the doctor. So we go up to Alstonville Clinic and see Dr Chu at the time and he says no we've got to go to hospital. So the ambulance came and go to Lismore Base Hospital. Um, They find out that I'm bleeding um, internally. So Uh, the cause for the bleed was the lymphangioma was actually growing and had caused um, a bleed. So they're trying to do an operation at Lismore Base and they can't fix the bleed there. Um, They don't have a pin that's small enough to go into the the vein. So um, I'm prepared and we go off in an air ambulance um, to Sydney. And I arrive in Sydney um, with my dad and I go straight to ICU, and there they can't stop the bleeding either. Uh, My mum and my sister arrive, and they're told that it's it's not good. So mum tells this story, and so they go home that night, and they're in their room, and my parents, so I'm not a Christian, don't know God, have been to Sunday school about once in my life um, on Easter and um, my parents, so we're down in Sydney and um, mum is in having a bath that night and she's crying and as you would be and she has this vision that Jesus is with me. So not Christian. And then all of a sudden she says, I feel really, I feel belt, I felt so much better. 
So they get up the next morning, come straight in. And um, at that point, I was in and out of consciousness. I was on so many drugs, but uh, I hadn't really been able to speak to them. But by this time, um, I'm awake when they come in. Um, they've taken all the tubes out. And mum's like, I can't, I can't believe it. And the doctor said, I don't know. It's just all of a sudden, it's just the, the bleeding has in, stopped on, on its own. We cannot explain why. Didn't expect that to happen. So mum starts telling me this story. And I said, you don't need to tell me, mum. Actually, I saw Jesus last night. And he came to me and he was sitting at, at my bed. So, get, a, get out of ICU, like, you know, 24 hours later. And um, we're flying home and, and we're on a Rex flight flying into Lismore and everyone knows that it's tiny little Rex planes. And it's a bit of a bumpy ride. And my mum spends the whole time, and my mum is, is a really quite nervous flyer, and she spends the whole time on the plane as we're bumping along and she's holding onto the seat and she's like, I, I know it's okay. And she's telling the air stewardess, it's okay. We're not going to crash because Jesus has just healed my daughter. <laughs> so this is a non-Christian lady telling the air hostess, it's okay, we don't need to be fearful. God's in control. So we come home and, and as a family we start going to church and my whole family gets saved. And, yeah, incredible. So life goes on. I'm now 20, haven't had any other problems. And then one day I'm washing my hair in the morning and I notice I can't really breathe very well. I'm really puffed brushing my, or washing my hair. And so mum goes, okay, we've got to go to the doctor for that. So at this time we're up in Brisbane and living up in Brisbane and um, see the doctor and straight away she says, no, we need to get a scan. We find out through the scan that my right lung has collapsed. We go see another doctor. They send me straight away to the PA hospital in Brisbane um, and find out that uh, the lymphangioma has leaked or is leaking um, into my chest and it's actually collapsed my lung because there's so much fluid there. Uh, I spent six weeks in hospital there and that was a very <laughs> depressing time. Had a few surgeries to try and reinflate the lung and I lived with a, a, a tube out my um, side, draining into a bottle for six weeks. Uh, and there were some lonely, lonely times. Then, uh, again, all of a sudden, it just stops leaking um, by itself. Six weeks in hospital, get out, I'm okay. And then only a few months later, I notice the feeling again. I can feel my, my lung. So we go to the doctor. Um, it is starting to to leak again so they decide this time that they're going to give me some radiation therapy in hope that the radiation therapy will actually cause some scar tissue at the point where it's leaking and sort of create a little bit of a blockage or a plug in there uh, and as a 20 year old my parents said we just moved up to Brisbane and uh, my parents have got new jobs and they don't feel like they can um, take the six weeks every day I was going for radiation therapy um, the time off work, so here am I, a 20-year-old, um, taking myself every day to the oncology unit to get um, radiation therapy. But I did get really great at reverse parallel parking. <laughs> uh, so um, radiation therapy seems to work. I'm all good. I don't have any leaking in my lung Again, but one of the things that they told me was just because of the size of, of the, um, the tumour that, and it's benign, it's non-cancerous, uh, that uh, it's probably too hard. It, it just, if, we wanted to, if I wanted to have children one day, that um, it probably was an impossibility. It was an impossibility probably to conceive, but also to carry um, those children because it would, of the size of the tumour. So life goes on and um, Dave and I decide we're going to get married uh, and um, we just thought in the back of our minds, uh, Dave knew that it was a potential that we'd probably maybe have to adopt um, if we wanted to have a family one day. 
So we were about two years um, into being married. So I got married when I was 24. About this point, it's 26. And we start thinking, oh, you know, maybe about adoption and looking into the cost of country, other countries. And we head down um, to a conference in Sydney uh, called Heaven Invades Earth. And it was Bill Johnson. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of him. He's got a ministry in America, um, Bethel Ministries. And he was over in Australia uh, at a church, day spring preaching. And uh, Dave and I are down there staying with some friends. And one night we come back from the conference and, um, you know, he's got a team there. So they have a, a, a school of the spirit there and they've got... Um, like YWAM, they've got students who come uh, and then go out to other countries and minister and things like that. But they've come down from for over for the conference and they're giving words of knowledge about lots of things like pain and backs. And so we're seeing all these people being healed up the front. And, and Dave, um, we get back one night and Dave says to me, well, you know, why don't you go up for, for prayer? And, and it was just, it was really challenging. I thought, you know what, I, I, thought, I think I was actually scared and I didn't believe that it was, it was something would ever happen in my life and I didn't believe that God's will for me was, um, was for, to heal me. And so we actually had a really big fight about that. And then, so this is a period of about six months that what happens next. Um, so we're at, at church one night and so we're back from the conference, had a big blue. Um, but we're at church one night and when the church we were going to at the time has um, nighttime services. And Dave was, um, with David had been on worship and he was locking up for, for the night, the church. And I was just like, yeah, he takes ages, he talks a lot. Uh, and so I'm just going to sit in the car and wait for him. Uh, and then maybe you'll get the message. He's like, come on, let's go. Um, so we're just sitting there quietly and, uh, and honestly not thinking about anything spiritual at all. And um, all of a sudden I hear a voice, never heard, um, I believe it was God's voice, never heard the voice after. And I believe God said to me, um, I'm healing you and in this process you are to remain um, in gratitude and thankfulness. So Dave gets in the car and I tell him what's happened and, and, like, bless him, he's like, okay, all right, Kate. And so every night with our meal, honestly, you know, it takes, when God says it takes, you know, a seed, a mustard seed of faith, like, that's what we gave. We'd have our meal, and Jesus, thank you for this food, and thank you for Kate's healing. That's, that's as good as it got. And then I started reading this book that we'd bought at the conference, uh, and it was called The Supernatural Power of a Transformed Mind. And I was in, I can still picture it, another one of these moments um, that I was talking about earlier in your life where you know and you can see, I can see it in my mind's eye. I'm sitting in the lounge room, Dave's cooking, and I'm reading this book and it's testimony after testimony about Jesus and healing these people and about God's will uh, and the design um, of God's will. And I come rushing into the kitchen. I said, Dave, I, God wants to heal me. And he's like, okay, okay, that's really good. Um, and it was just this beautiful, like, like I said, it's just in this six months. So then all of a sudden we think, yeah, all right. So we're 26 now, so old. Um, we, if we're going to start thinking about having a family, let's get into this. So we book and um, go to the doctor who refers us to an obstetrician locally. He looks at us and goes, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that's going to do. I don't know. I'm going to refer you to someone else. So we get referred to a staff specialist at Lismore Base Hospital and he looks at us and goes, I don't know what that is. Uh, and I've never seen it before. I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but let's just start at the beginning and let's just go through all the blood tests, all the scans and see what we're dealing with. So we go to this guy, do all the tests, and he says to us, look, it's going to take me a while. I'm, I haven't seen this before. Um, I'm going to, we do case conferences with doctors in Sydney every week where we bring difficult cases. We'll bring along your case. We'll have a chat and get some other's opinions and we'll get back to you. Uh, and, and anything in my medical history is always a long time. Like I've never heard back from a doctor straight away. I just kind of think, oh, well, you know, we'll hear from you in six weeks. 
Anyway, back in the good old days when you had a home phone um, with an answering machine, so we get home from one work from one day and there's a message on the answering machine and we play it and it's it's a receptionist and she's from the the doctors that we'd just seen, and she says, um, uh, "Hello, you know Catherine, uh, this is." Rhonda from whatever surgery, um, where your test results are in and the doctor needs to speak to you as soon as possible about them. And I'm like, oh, this is four, you know, probably three or four days later. And I was like, oh, Dave, I don't know. I, and every bit of you know, whatever God had spoken to me, you know, left, felt, went out the window. I was like, I am dying. <laughs> there is something bad. We're going to go. So we made the appointment. We get in, like I think the next day or the day after. And the, the gentleman there, he, um, he b- brings us into the surgery and he's, he's got a, a computer screen and he turns it around to us and he says, this is a scan from about two years ago. Um, I'd been to hospital and every time I had caught a cold or anything, people could see, you know, my history and go, oh, you better go to the hospital. So I'd had a few turns in hospital. Um, and so, the, and where they scan me, and they go, oh, yeah, and read my notes, yeah, you're right, and go home. But they'd had, I've got a full, you know, history there. So he's got a scan, an MRI scan from two, you know, two years ago, um, and my scan from the other day um, when they'd taken the, the, the new scans. And he said to Dave and I, I, I don't know what to tell you, but I'm looking at a scan from two years ago, and I'm looking at your scan now. And there is no tumour. No tumour at all. And Dave and I are looking at each other and I think everyone thinks in these moments, like, what would you do? How do you behave? And Dave and I looked at each other and started laughing. (laughs) And this guy must have thought, what? And we were just laughing and looking at each other and looking at the scan, showing, show us again. And, you know, this massive tumour, this huge, like this to here, massive tumour, and now absolutely nothing. And he said to us, if I had seen your sc- this scan and not known your medical history, I would com- classify this as completely normal. Thank you, Jesus. So God's continued to be extremely kind and remind us of his miracle. When we had Cobus, uh, it was just so easy. So easy, in fact, that when we started, just decided we'd start trying for um, a baby, it was like two months later and I was like, I don't feel well. And Dave's like, I think you should take a pregnancy test. And I said, that doesn't know. We don't need to take a pregnancy test. We take a pregnancy test. I'm like sitting on the lounge and he's like, you need to go and check it. Are you going to check it? The timer says 15 minutes. I'm like, oh, Dave, don't worry about it. And he goes, so he walks in and he goes, oh. I think you could come. And we came and here, lo and behold, we're pregnant. And the funny thing, it, like, honestly, God just must look at us and just go, you gooses. But it was a Sunday and so we book him for the Sunday doctor to confirm. And he goes, if you're pregnant at home, you're pregnant here. <laughs> and it was just so easy. And when we have reminded the blessing and then we have Ari and then we have Sana. So I have three children Yes. All who are a perfect reminder of God's goodness and his faithfulness. Mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it together. So we all grow up being influenced and impacted by the ideas and lifestyles of the people around us. Trauma, wounding lies, impact the way that we view God and ourselves and others. Renewing our minds is a choice that we have to make to overcome those false narratives. We need to tap into God's perspective and shift our reality. It's not lost on me the journey of my healing that God challenged my perception of him, which was completely biblically inaccurate. He renewed my mind so I understand his will for my life in that moment.
how thoughts and habits limit our ability to grow and believe. In my life for that situation, I needed God to come in and shake things up in order for my thinking to be transformed. We need to submit to our Lord and his ways of doing things. His truth had been the opposite of what I'd believed for years. But by surrendering control, thanks, Brendan, that was beautiful. God can have his way with our belief systems. Here's a moment of real honesty for you. So God picked up this topic at the start of the year for me, just after our, so the renewal of the mind, again, after our first worship and prayer night in January this year, and I think I've shared it before, but I had a picture when I was praying and I felt like I had the, there was these five chains sitting over the top of my head. And as we sang and worshipped um, and prayed, I felt like four of those chains break, but there was one that was there. And afterward, I went up to um, someone else and I said, can you pray? I just, I, in my mind, I could see this chain and it hadn't shifted and I just want to know why. Uh, and it was that weekend... Um, at church and honestly there was not a spiritual moment in and I was on multimedia at the time that's a blessed place everyone get on it um but I felt like God speak to me in in just a moment and say to me that that fifth chain was my mind and then I think as a Christian I don't believe in coincidences I believe that God's hand is in every moment and it's just whether we can see it. And then a week or two later, Al uh, announced his series on the renewing of the mind. And I just, I love the kindness of God. And I, I'm sure it wasn't just for me this. Uh, and I know God has given that, Al, the, the revelation for the whole church for this season. And yeah, I just, I don't think it's just me that God's been talking to. And I think that when there's a move of God's spirit, there needs to be um, a participation moment for us or I think that we'll miss out on that blessing. We all know that God's given us free will and he desires relationship with us. He needs us to choose if we'll let him in and surrender our hearts. Spending time with, with him to renew our minds And Dave, if you can just chuck that um, verse back up again. There's actually, in the verse, there's, there's that verb and it's let. So there's that action that God's calling us to participate. This is not God's going to just strike you in the head and renew your mind, that God's actually calling you into relationship with him, that he wants you to let him in. He wants you to come to him he wants you to he wants to renew your mind but you need to be in participation with that so I think if there's anything that you think that God's been talking to you if there's any areas of your thought life um, or maybe you've struggled with your own health journey and want prayer or maybe it's something today that the Holy Spirit's been highlighting to you I just think we really need to be mindful just to take this opportunity. Um, So here's our choice for the action, to repent and to ask our Heavenly Father to replace it with his truth. And I heard someone so beautifully describe repentance as the act of re-engaging with God's perception. I think that we forget that our Bible says that God heals all diseases and he forgives all our sins. We believe the sins part, I think. We all get that. But I really, I, I, and this is a challenge for myself as well, still, even after going through this, I am not perfect. (laughs) That God heals all of our diseases. He heals all of our iniquities. So let's, I'm going to pray, but let's just have a time that we can, and I might ask, would you be happy to sing again, Lauren and Nick? That was beautiful, whatever song you choose. Um, 
let's soften our hearts. Let's go, let God soften. Let's choose to soften our heart toward God. And if there is something that he's been talking to you about today, whatever it is, there's many people here who would love to pray, love you to walk in breakthrough, love you to work in the perfect will that God has for your life because that is the will of God for your life. Everyone thinks, oh, the will of, I don't know what the purpose of my life is. God hasn't revealed to me his amazing career that's going to be me. I don't think it's that complicated. I think God's will for our life is that we will walk in the biblical principles that he has given us that Jesus bought when he died on the cross for us, that we will walk in miracles, that we will walk in healing, that we will see deliverance, we will see breakthrough, whatever your circumstance. So let's pray and then we're going to hear those, hit the musicians and if you want to come up, come up. Um, Those who want to go and get coffee and tea, please go and get coffee and tea. But if there's others here who who need time to reflect and to spend time with God, just be mindful of those. And to those who are joining us online, thank you. I hope that you've had an amazing time this morning. I know God has been speaking to you. Um, And have a great week. So thanks, Jesus, that you, uh, you love us, that you want the best for us. Maybe there's some people here today who struggle to believe that there is a, a, that God wants good for them and are struggling to know your will for their life, God. Father, we just soften our hearts to you now as just that act of obedience, that, that verb, that letting you do something. And we know that you've been calling us, you've been talking to us, maybe not today, maybe just throughout this whole series that Al's been running that there's something that you're talking to us about and that we need to do business today with you. And God, we just, we thank you. You're an amazing God, that you're a God of miracles, that you can move mountains. You can save people from the furnace. If we believe that our Bible is 100% true, which I do, God, you can do anything today. And we wait on you. In Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen.